Hi, I'm Anne from Game Like a Mother. Today I'm going to show you how to play Sleeping Queens 2, The Rescue. It's ages 8 and up, 2 to 5 players, and it takes 20 minutes. Let me show you how to play. The goal of the game is to rescue kings. In a two-player game, you need to rescue four kings. In a three to four-player game, rescue three. In a five-player game, rescue two kings. We have a three-player game we're going to be doing here, so you will need to rescue three kings. For game setup, you shuffle the main deck and flip over one card in the center. Then you're going to put the rescue companions face down around the outside of that. And then all of the king cards have a different color back. And you're going to put them face up around the outside of that. Uh, unlike the Sleeping Queens um, in the original game, none of these have different point values. It doesn't matter which ones you collect. It just shows their pictures of kings in various states of distress and peril. Each player is given a knight figure at random. These each have different abilities on them. Do not get too attached to these. They move around over the course of the game. And in a two player game, you don't play with the black knight. You place the die out in the center and make sure the turn guide card, which on the other side, it shows the, um, an explanation of the instant action cards. Put these out where people can reference them and you are ready to go. None of the cards from the main deck are dealt out to begin the game. How you start is the person who most recently found a lost item gets to go first. We'll say it's this person. And they're going to roll the die. We'll say they get a two. And their special ability is they get to draw one more card than the number rolled. So they're going to draw three cards. Oh, how convenient. They drew the three different colors of queens you can get in this game. So how this game works is you collect cards. When you have queens, you're trying to collect number cards as well. And when you can make a math problem out of the number cards, you then discard those and you get to flip over one of these rescue companions, any one of these, and you hope that the color on the rescue companion matches the color of a queen that you have and you discard those in order to collect a king. So this player's not there yet. They drew these cards. When you draw your cards, first, if you had any action cards, you would take care of those. None of these are action cards. Then you play your cards face up in front of you. Your cards are not a secret in this game. Everyone can see your cards. Then you can take an action based on the cards you have. If something's available, like if you had an equation, you can discard it. Um, but they don't have anything like that here. So you have a max of five cards in your hand. They're under that. Their turn is over. Play proceeds to the left. And now it's this person's turn to go. They're going to go ahead and roll the die. And we're going to have them roll a three. And they're going to get one, two, three. They just got number cards. Um, there isn't anything they can do with these specific number cards. It's numbers between one and 10 in the deck. So they would just place them face up in front of them. Uh, they, the types of math problems you can do in this game are you can do addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. You can't do same numbers. You can't just take two threes and have them laid down for, um, to collect a companion. Um, but that does come in handy for something else. So we'll say if they had, we'll trade. Instead, if they had been they had been given these, if they'd been given a three, a seven, and a 10, they could say, okay, three plus seven equals 10, or 10 minus seven equals three, um, whatever they, whichever one they want to do. And then they would discard them, and they would get to pick a rescue companion, which does not count towards your total number of cards you have in your hand. Queens count numbers count, rescue companions don't count, and if you collect any kings, those don't count towards your max of five cards in your hand. Now it is this player's turn, and let's talk about some of the action cards in this game. We'll have them roll, they got a two, they collect two cards, and oh my, they got the sleeping willow. The sleeping willow makes queens fall asleep and you have to play these right away. If they're the instant action cards, you have to play them right away. Uh, this person's knight protects them against the sleeping willow. So this would not make their queen fall asleep. Instead, it would make the player to the left, their queen fall asleep, all of them. 
all three of these queens would fall asleep. They would discard this. Uh, if they had drawn something besides a queen, or even if they didn't have the sleeping willow, the, the, they didn't have the protection against the sleeping willow, the way this works is if you don't have any, it just goes to the left until it hits somebody who has an awake sleeping queen, a, a awake queen, and it makes them go to sleep. So they were protected, they would discard this, and there's not anything else they can do, so it's this person's turn. For this person's turn, so the die has a bunch of numbers on it, one, two, and three, but it also has a dragon. There's two different ways to wake up sleeping queens. One is if you roll this, everybody trades their knights. They move clockwise. So sometimes you roll this a bunch and the knights just keep on moving around. So now this person is protected against the sleeping willow and this person has their ability. Um, and because this person rolled it, they get to pick one of their queens they want to flip up. So you can look at your queens, they can decide which one, and they say, okay, I'm going to wake up this queen. And if they roll it again, then everybody trades these again, and the queen, they get to pick another queen to wake up. And then if they roll a regular number, they draw some cards. Um, we're going to show you what the other action cards. The other way to wake up queens is if you just have two of the same number and you discard them, then all of your queens that are asleep wake up. So we'll say they drew, a th they got a three. They get one, two, three. These are the rest of the action cards. The instant action cards have a lightning bolt on them. Uh, the gnomes are very fun. You get to roll the die again. And depending on what you get, you can either uh, take a face down companion if you roll a one, which is really great. Uh, you can steal a card. This is the only way to steal a card in this game. Otherwise you're trading. Um, and you can only steal uh, number cards and queens, and um, you cannot steal the companions or king cards. Uh, so if you got that, you would roll and pick something depending on that. So we'll say that they got um, a one and they got to get a companion. Very exciting. They're gonna be able to get a king this time. Um, and they have to keep on going. There's the switch witch, which is optional. You do not have to switch with somebody if you like the cards that you have. And um, you can even switch companions if you wanted to, but you have to have a companion and another person has to have a companion. Um, so you can choose to do that. And then the last one is a spell card, which you don't have to use right away. You can have here and it allows you on this turn or any future turn to search through the discard pile and take um, a number card that you want um, in order to help you to complete a spell. So they're going to wait on that. They still have one asleep queen, but they're going to show you what it's like to collect a king. So the peacock queen matches with the crane and you discard this, place this back face up in the middle and just pick whichever king looks fun. You can pick whichever one. They're going to pick the turtle king, place it next to them, uh, it is not part of the number of cards they have in their hand, but they just need to get two more of these in order to win the game. The only other bits of information you need is that one of these rescue companions has all three colors on it. So it serves as a as an all porpoise uh, tool and it works for any color queen. Uh, and if it gets to a point in the game where there's only a people have collected a bunch of these and you only have face up rescue companions, out here and the rest have been collected by people who haven't gotten to use them yet then at that point you take the ones that are out face up out here shuffle them up and place them down face down for the rest of the game until someone has the right number of kings and has won so that's how to play sleeping queens 2 the rescue the target demographic for this game is anyone who has played and loved sleeping queens if you love sleeping queens you will love this I would say between the two, if you were choosing one to get for your family, I would still choose Sleeping Queens. This does not replace Sleeping Queens. However, it's really good. And if your child likes Sleeping Queens, then they will love this as well. Uh, the rule complexity is medium. There's just a little bit more going on than Sleeping Queens, but it's really manageable and it's not anything too tricky. It seems very intuitive once you've played through, once there's just some new cards to learn about the first time you go through. Uh, how competitive is this game? It's medium. There's uh, one person wins, there's some trading and some stealing, 
but that part seems a little bit more mellow actually than in uh, regular Sleeping Queens because it's more trading than stealing and you get to keep your kings once you have them and that's what really matters for endgame. Ironically, what causes the most spats when uh, we've played this game is because the cards are face up, uh, other children will point out math problems that the other kids could make with their cards, and the second grader would like to let you know that he jolly well can make his own math problems and doesn't need any of your help. Uh, so that's what we've run into for that. The replay value is high. Uh, it is so fun to play. We got this and we've just been playing it every night. The kids are begging to, to play it on repeat. We've taken it over to friends' houses and they've been really excited about it and enjoyed playing it. So it is really good. Uh, similar games, if you like this one, Ratatat Cat has a follow-up game called Ratatat Roll, which we really love. It's all of the fun of Ratatat Cat, but there's a game board and a cat of liberty. You get to move around and a little more strategy, and it's very good. And then also, if your child's playing Sleeping Queens to the Rescue, they're also ready to play Dragonwood, which is a game in which you are uh, rolling dice and trying to collect magical woodland creatures. Um, so they would probably like that as well. But we are just loving Sleeping Queens to the rescue. It's super fun and you should check it out. Thanks and see you next time from Game Like a Mother.